Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the complex analysis. Today I will explain you the concept of the Morera theorem. Myself Dr. Harish Garg. You can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of the complex analysis. In this playlist you can see the various theory lecture related to the complex number argument analytic function cauchy riemann equations and many more available in this playlist you can see we have covered the last topic of the cauchy integral theorem you can follow and subscribe my youtube channel so that you will get the notification when i upload my next video now what we have discussed so far we have covered the cauchy integral theorem what this state what this theorem say to you if you have analytic function f of z and its derivative are my continuous then the integration of the fz is my zero fine that means if you have the analytic functions fine then the integration of the analytic function is my zero but in this lecture we will see whether the converse of this theorem is correct or not so that's why whether the the converse is correct or not what is the meaning of that if the integration of the function f of z is my zero then can you say the function is analytic or not fine there is a major objective of this today's lecture and if the converse is my true then that result is known as morera theorem fine so that is my objective that is my goal of this today's lecture that is called as the converse of the cauchy theorem is known as the morera theorem now what is the statement of this morera theorem is if the function is my continuous and the integration of the f over the region c is my zero then the function is analytic inside the curve c or inside the region c fine now proof is a very very simple i will give you the proof within the three four lines are there fine or three four concepts how you can solve that you can see it is given to you the integration of the fz is my zero and we all knows when you say the integration of fz from any point say z0 to z is my zero fine where z0 i call as a fixed point when the integration will be zero what does it means that means this integration is independent of the path fine because the integration is zero that means area under the curve zero that means it is independent of the path starting from z0 fine you can say the integration from z0 to z is independent of the path from any from the z0 to any point what does it means that means you can say this function fz is a function of because it is independent of the z0 so it is totally dependent on the function z is it okay fine now since f is my continuous function so i can choose the f of z is u plus iota v while z is my x plus iota y fine i can consider the phi of z is a function of the complex variable i call as u plus iota v i can substitute the value in the given function what is fz is u plus iota v what is the dz i can calculate the value of the dz from the equation it's a dx plus iota dy which is equal to u plus iota v fine now what will be your target your target is to prove fz is analytic so that means your target is to prove fz will satisfy the cr equations and their partial derivatives are my continuous fine that is your target now you can see how you can prove it in a very simple manner i can open this bracket so that will be u into dx minus v into dy this is the real part plus iota times v of dx plus u into dy which is equal to u plus iota into v fine i can equate the coefficients equating the real and the imaginary parts equating the real and imaginary part what is your capital u capital u will be your integration from z0 to z u dx minus v dy similarly can you find the capital v that is from z0 to z v 
dx plus u dy. Fine. Now your target is to find the value of del u by del x, del u by del y, and so on. So can you find the value of the del u by del x? Partial derivative with respect to x, it is my u. Partial derivative of u with respect to y, it is my minus of v. v with respect to x, it is my v. And v with respect to y is my u. So clearly say del u upon del x, which is equal to del v over del y. And del u over del y is minus del v over del x. What does it, it implies? That means u and v. What is the u and v? That is a phi. Phi satisfied my phi satisfied my CR equation because u and v are the part of the phi of z. Fine. Or u and v satisfy the CR equations. Moreover, moreover, f of z is my continuous function. It is given to you where f z is my u plus iota v. Fine. That means u and v are my continuous part or continuous functions. Fine. So once u and v are my continuous function, what does it mean? That means partial derivatives are my continuous. That means phi of z satisfied my CR equation and their partial derivative continuous. That means phi of z is my analytic function. Once phi of z is analytic function, you can find its derivative by taking the real component plus iota times del v by del x. So what is the value of the del u by del x? This is my small u plus iota del v by del x is my small v and which is nothing but my f of z. Is it fine? So what does it mean? That means phi dash of z is my f of z. So your target is to prove phi, your target is to prove f is my analytic function. So what do you conclude from this line? This line say f of z is the derivative of the analytic function. And we all know if phi is my analytic function, if phi is my analytic function, this implies phi dash is also analytic functions. Moreover, any derivative of the analytic function is analytic. Fine. You can see this playlist for more detail. So therefore, your phi is analytic, phi dash is analytic. That means f is also my analytic function. And that's the simple proof of this Morera. So I hope you can like and comment on this video as well. We will see the next lecture on the Cauchy integral formula again with the help of the numerical examples and the concept wise. Till then you can share this video with your friends and don't forget to like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Best of luck students. Happy learning.